Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. So many things are going on today. <clears throat> and before uh, Saturday, I just want to make one more video. Now, I have a lot of German uh, subscribers that also, I think, listen to my English videos. And so that's a kind of, I'm thinking, a good thing. But I'm welcoming all my new subscribers. Um, I'm just really so thankful that the Lord has led you to my channel. Today, I want to talk about several things. This weekend, uh, we are having this big demonstration in Berlin. I also heard that all over the world, uh, there are going to be demonstrations and they're joining really this um, Freedom Day that uh, was really started in, in Germany. And uh, unfortunately, in Germany, the demonstration there has been um, forbidden, I believe, by the Senate. That's what they said. And some say by the police. I do follow them, but um, I don't listen to them constantly. But they are really uh, asking people to come to Berlin anyways and, and not be uh, stopped by uh, any um, um, ban, <laughs> uh, demonstration ban. There, there will be many demonstrations during that week. Um, and so that big demonstration by Kvea Denken uh, wasn't the only one, but they, they banned that one. And they're working on it right now. I know that they're already going uh, in front of the court, um, the uh, top court, um, you know, to uh, get this ban um, taken off. And they really think they can do it. So, yeah, I hope people will go. I have said before that I personally don't think that all these demonstrations will do much and yet, well, maybe they do something, they kind of prolong things a little bit, but eventually there is, I think we cannot do anything about this takeover. We just need to understand that there is a takeover and that there has been a takeover for a long time. I have to mention this book again because I have continued to read this book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome, The Conversation of a Priest by Charles Chiniqui. Chiniqui. Nick, yeah, Chiniqui. And um, of course, he lived during the time of Abraham Lincoln. That was a long time ago. And he... Um, had a lot of insight, of course, in the Roman Catholic Church and what's going on. And um, he was totally educated in the system and finally realized um, that it is Babylon the Great. And he, of course, le left and then had a kind of comparison between what the Roman Catholic Church did teach and what um, Protestantism, you know, teaches. So it's very interesting. I, have, I will have to talk more about it um, because it's just so amazing. It's just so amazing. He talks about how Protestants are educated to be, what does he call them? Corpses, dead corpses. Uh, can you imagine that? I mean, they are, they, they want them to end up like dead corpses corpses and on the dead corpses is where the hierarchy sits on it's a throne for the hierarchy for the pope on top for the bishops these dead corpses what he means by dead corpses is um that they want people not to think yes they want people to do the research and then lay it to the foot of uh, the pope and you know the uh, and the um, and the bishops, but they don't ever want uh, them to be smarter and more intelligent than the Pope. That's why the Pope has uh, 
killed many, many scientists during the, the Middle Ages. So many had to bow down to the Pope and um, what do you call it? I think it's called recant. They had to um, denounce uh, their findings, their scientific findings, instead of saying, oh, the, 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 the earth goes around the sun. They have to, had to bow down to the Pope and say, oh, I'm so sorry that I said that. That's the wrong, th I mean, that I said that the earth goes around the sun. I, I was just a fool and, you know, or they would have killed that person. And so the goal of the education of the Roman Catholic Church is to have obedient citizens. And that's exactly what he says. That is the philosophy, the theology of the Roman Catholic Church, that we have docile um, um, servants, slaves. That what is the goal. And I'm thinking, that is sounds just terrible. And, and yes, it does. And what you can find that is in chapter before chapter 14. So 12, um, 10, you can find that. You can find how um, the Roman Catholics, Roman Catholic students, even if they're Protestant, are being raised to be docile, to be brainless, um, and to be totally obedient to authorities. People, what are we seeing today? I mean, it just, my jaw just dropped. Okay, my jaw just dropped when I read that. Because that is exactly what I see today. I mean, to the T. Today we're wearing a mask to symbolize that we have no more freedom of speech. Yeah, people think, oh, we're wearing these masks to protect other people. Do you see? It's always about, oh, uh, we have to do everything for the benefit of others. What about ourselves? We have no right whatsoever for privacy and individual uh, individualism. None whatsoever. We are nothing but a collective and we are nothing like a herd, a herd of animals. And we're being treated like a herd of animals. And when we are wearing masks, that's exactly what we are. We are a herd of animals. There is no more individuality left. Do you know that when you look at a face, you know, recognize the other person is by the features of the face. And if you cover up over half of your face, think about that, over half of my face, would you still recognize me? But do you see that is exactly what is happening today? There is no backup that a mask actually helps everybody. No, it doesn't, okay? If I don't have any symptoms, then I don't, I'm not contagious. That means for me to wear a mask when I don't even have any symptoms is stupid. It is, uh, uh, it doesn't work. So, but no, we all have to wear masks today. And I believe very strongly that these masks are symbols for not only uh, shutting us up, no more freedom of speech, which we're seeing today. I mean, somebody actually argued with me, a friend of mine argued with me on Facebook. Oh, we're living in the country of freedom. We are not living in the country of freedom anymore. Our freedom has been taken away. And you know what? This priest recognized that 200 years ago. Okay, 200 years ago, he recognized that that was the goal of the Roman Catholic Church is to take our freedom away. The freedom that we're used to. Okay, the freedom that we are used to uh, or have had been used to is now uh, in, in, in uh, uh, extreme uh, speed taken away from us. 
the way of life, the American way in life is coming to an end. And people still say, oh, uh, if we just wait long enough, if we're going to wear these masks long enough, oh, the coronavirus is going to go away. People, their intention is never to let you go back to normal. Never. Okay? You will go back to normal when you are totally controlled. That's when things will go back to normal. Well, actually, they don't go back to normal. It just seems like they're going back to normal. I know people are kicking and screaming even right now and trying to keep things as normal as possible. They're ignoring that um, we are going towards this, uh, n you know, new normal, as they call it, in, in tremendous speed. But no, we still continue to go on vacation and we're going to plan our stuff. That is exactly what Jesus said. The time will be before his coming. Like the, 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 the days of Noah. Okay? The days of Noah. The time will be like the days of Noah. Everybody just did whatever the old stuff, what they always did. They went on vacation. They celebrated. They married. Everything was just normal. They tried to keep it as normal as possible until Noah went into the ark and it was too late. Now, are we doing the same thing, people? Are we doing the same thing? Okay, another thing, though, that uh, we have been, uh, you know, being exposed to uh, today is um, these elections. Are we really, do we really have the freedom to vote for a candidate that we really choose from the people? No, we haven't had that uh, an opportunity for a long time, probably since Abraham Lincoln. Uh, yeah, maybe we can go back that far. Since Abraham Lincoln, he probably was still a person, uh, you know, that the people elected and a man and I hear it again from this book okay from this book that he was extremely good person very very um kind and um just a really nice person so but what have we had lately of course what we have we had lately we had uh, candidates that are not in the interest of us. Well, I shouldn't say that, should I? Because they cannot be uh, um, working in the interest of us. It doesn't matter. I'm, I looked at Biden, some of what Biden is saying with this, uh, uh, about this coronavirus and how he is going to demand every state uh, uh, to have this mandatory uh, mask wearing thing. And, um, you know, he is going to crack down on everybody when it comes to Corona. People, we already know this is a bunch of false nonsense. Okay. I'm not saying the coronavirus isn't there. Who cares? There's so many viruses out there and we are not worried about them. We wash our hands. We take precautions. If we're sick, we stay home, okay? If we have the uh, uh, compromised immune system, we take precautions. People, it's nothing new. The coronavirus is not anything new, really, okay? It's an old virus that we already have had many years ago, and we already know how to deal with it. It's over. The discussion should be over. No, but it's being pushed and pushed. Now it's being pushed, you know, through our candidates that we're supposed to be voting for. So who are we going to vote for? How can anybody vote for Biden and, and his uh, vice president candidate? I mean, Biden's going to make our life a miserable thing. And then can we even vote for, for Trump? Or does it even matter, people? I listened to Melania Trump. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, she, she, she doesn't even know how to speak because she's reading, she's reading everything. I mean, at least she can read. Uh, so that's kind of good. 
I mean, she could read it. She looked for this side and read it. She looked on that side and read it. She looked in the middle. She looked on that. I mean, you could see she was reading it. I mean, Tess totally read everything she was supposed to say. I mean, dears, does she even have her own opinion? That's my question. Does she even have her own opinion? Then, do you know what she was talking about? About the invisible enemy. You know, we're thinking that maybe Trump is a little smarter about this coronavirus and about wearing masks, but we already know he is totally going along with this nonsense. We we know, I mean, yeah, he, he cracks his little jokes once in a while. So you think, you know what, at least he's still alive. But um, he went just right along, you know, uh, investing in this whole thing about coronavirus. Not one time does he step out and say, hey, people, quit going crazy over. This is just a virus and we can handle it. Okay, we don't have to go on lockdown. We don't have to put masks on. We don't have to test everybody to, te to death. Um, people, we need to wake up because this is getting worse. We don't have any more choice. I believe even if Trump had good intentions or had good intentions before he became president, he right now is controlled by the new world order. And you know who is running the new world order. Now, if you still don't know who is running the new world order, you need to read this book, people. You really need to read this, this book. Okay? I will be talking about it more and more. Because it's a thick book. And I'm sure more and more things come out. Remember, I started talking about the educational system. We have been educated for many years now to be obedient citizens. Now, where in the world does that idea come from? The theology, the, uh, the, the, the philosophy about being an obedient citizen. Where do you think is, is that coming from? That is coming straight from the Roman Catholic theology. I mean, bottom line, okay, they have um, put the American people who were so much the land of the brave and the free to sleep. They have educated them to be obedient citizen, not citizen that think, not citizens that have their own um, uh, or carry their own responsibility. No, we are not right now treated, I mean, we are right now like immature kids that cannot do their own research or find their own research. I'm not saying everybody has the opportunity or possibility to do their own research when it comes to virology and uh, immunology and all these things. No, we don't. But we can read professional articles. Everybody educated should read professional articles. That That is something that everybody learns in college, to read a professional article, to do research, to do research and to find the truth, weigh things. Okay, isn't that what we should be learning in school to weigh things out, you know, to uh, uh, logically look at things? What happens to our logical thinking? It's out the window. What happens to our critical thinking? It's out the window. We are no, no longer capable of reading research ourselves. We have to rely on somebody, somebody high up to make the decision, to kiss their feet and say, oh yeah, we're going to bow down to you. That's exactly what people are doing. Okay. I was always wondering why are people sleeping? What is going on? Well, it is because they went to sleep because that's the way they were educated. And now I understand who was behind it? Remember in my last video, I said that the Pope totally, or the Popes totally dislike freedom. They don't want people to learn to be independent and self-reliant. 
That is what the Pope doesn't like because he wants to be on top and make all the decisions. He wants to be in control. Now, here's the other question when I'm saying that. Why in the world does he think that he is better than everybody else? Where does he get that idea from? That another human being or other human beings are better and should be bowed down to. Where is that understanding coming from? Okay, think about that. Okay, that is an understanding that for some reason I never understood. Never. Okay, that there's people that make themselves better than others. Now, I grew up totally in a Christian community. I grew up under Roman Catholic rule. I even believe I went to public school, but even the public school was in connection with the church. Okay? And that's where I totally was really exposed to that thinking. But I was always it's like it always rubbed me the wrong way and that's why i was so attracted to the united states because that thinking of the united states that freedom thinking that opposed totally what i grew up in this hierarchy thinking where oh somebody on top is more important more valuable more educated, more this and more that, is totally something that really didn't set very well with me. But I was very torn in between because that's how I was raised. And so it took me a long time to get out of that thinking. I was really caught in that thinking, oh, some people are really better than others. Oh, if you have more education, well, then you get to go into this other group that is better than everybody else. Okay. Oh, if you have a degree from a seminary, you're just much more knowledgeable. Um, what else? Oh, if you have a degree like a, from a college degree, if you're a doctor, right, a PhD, then you're so much more knowledgeable. Um, what else? If you have a lot of money, okay, you're so much better. You have so much more power. Now, understand, this is the thinking, this is the hierarchy thinking of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, where is that coming from? This guy is saying that it actually comes from paganism, from the pagan religions, from paganism, from the P pagan philosopher, Greeks philosoph Greek philosophers. That's where it comes from. Okay, and I see that very much strongly in Germany, period. And even Protestantism did not take that out. Okay. Not even Protestantism didn't take that out. This hierarchy thinking. That really remained. And we see that today in our churches. This hierarchy thinking. Oh, I'm the pastor and I'm going to say how it's going to be. Uh, or, ooh, I'm a deacon. Or, ooh, I'm an elder. And you better listen to me. That people is exactly against the Bible's teaching. Very, very much. The Bible tells us that we should not see ourselves higher than somebody else. Jesus himself taught that. Okay, he says, no, in the kingdom of God, there is no somebody in charge. Okay, it is not... Um, you know, a ruling over or somebody having authority over. No, the people that are supposed to be your leaders are supposed to be servants. That's what Jesus taught. That's what also then Paul taught very strongly. All the apostles, they taught that. Yes, we have in our head that these apostles were leaders, but they were also uh, um, servants. 
They were also servants. Why were they leaders? Because they knew the doctrine and they protected the doctrine. But eventually other people came into this leadership team. Anytime you have a stuck leadership team that is not moving, you know it's a hierarchical leadership, uh, leadership system that is false. Because, see, leaders always change because people learn more. People have different uh, gifts. And so different people should lead during a different times. God uh, uses different people to do different things. We need to understand that. And that is what Paul taught in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 uh, and 12. He says people have different gifts, but that does not mean that they are higher than the other person. Just because you're an apostle doesn't mean you're higher than, let's say, somebody who's serving a deacon. Okay? It's just you have a different gift. You have a different gift that you need to use to serve the body. But where is this thinking of hierarchy coming from? Which is so extreme, so extreme in the Catholic Church. Okay? It is extreme in the Catholic Church. It's like, oh no, no matter what, you are going to bow down to the people in leadership, the, 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 the bishops, the priests, the bishops, you know, and the Pope. No matter what, and that's what he wrote in here in these chapters that I just wrote. I mean, it doesn't matter. If Jesus comes on this earth and says one thing and the Pope says another, they're expecting you to follow the Pope. This is how bad it is. Okay? This is how bad it is. And that has maybe never left the Protestant Church. When we, when uh, Martin Luther declared um, uh, the Reformation, maybe that never, never was cleaned out. It's very possible that it never, never was cleaned out. Well, and I think it didn't because the higher, higher, um, hierarchy continued to exist. And that's where we went wrong because we still got, were stuck with one foot in the Roman Catholic Church. And because we were stuck in the Roman Catholic Church and not totally throughout everything, okay? That's why the Pope could reel us back, okay? Could reel the Protestant churches back. And that's what we are having today. That's why he could get a foothold into the United States and destroy it. He literally destroyed the United States. And okay, what did he, what does everybody think? Well, it's communism. Oh yeah, communism. We have to be worried about communism coming in and destroying the U.S. People, it's not communism. It is Catholicism that is, has destroyed the United States. That's what it is. Now, what is my goal? I mean, what is my plan for that? I don't have one. The only thing that I can see is, of course, we need to go to the Bible and continue to follow Jesus. Right now, at this point, the only thing we have remaining is to wait for Jesus. If he is not coming, this world is lost. And I'll tell you right now, there is no time to change. We're at the end. We're at the end. Okay. I wished there would be time to change, but there is no time to go back. This guy 200 years ago, 200 years ago, this guy was telling you that the Roman Catholic Church was taken over. Matter of fact, I read within 25 years, they said they were going to uh, control the United States. That's what they said. So 25 years from this guy, it was in the beginning of 1900. The beginning of 1900. What happened in the beginning of 1900? We had um, 
We had the First World War. We had the Second World War. So in other words, they had control enough to let down, to let the European countries um, crumble, be destroyed, because they already had the United States in their hands in order to take over the world through the United States. That is exactly what happened. Now, if you don't believe me, you need to start the research. Start reading, I mean, this book. I got this in my hands. I mean, I have to tell this lady to thank her for uh, um, advising me to get this book, okay? That is such a good research, such a good research. Now, I have um, heard it, you know, before about these things, you know, what is happening. I mean, there's other things that I have heard, and I kind of put it aside, these book aside, and thinking, oh, okay, you know what, all right. But this is just screaming right in my face. And I can see exactly what's happening today. Melana Trump saying, oh, the invisible enemy. The invisible enemy. Does that sound like, uh, like, um, 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 what is it? What ha you know, after the after nine eleven, um, you know, we had an enemy too, but of course it was a you know a different enemy. Um, so, but now we have a new enemy and an inv invisible enemy. I mean, is it always that we need to have an enemy in order to be scared to death? Is that what we need? It's like, oh my goodness. And and you thinking you really think that. Somebody can actually trust that Trump team. I mean, I, I understand. What do we have? I wouldn't want to vote for Biden either. Okay. But then again, I don't believe that things will change with um, Trump either. This is all a, a dividing thing right now. Polarizing thing. This world is in bad, bad um, condition okay and we're not going to change it okay I know you know somebody wants to you know watch my um, my video and, and, and say something is wrong with it I am not here to change anything people I'm not here to change anything okay and I'm not even if I wake up some people and tell them, wait, you need, you need to wake up. The only thing I'm waking them up towards is look for Jesus. Pray every day that Jesus is returning. And that's all I can call. I can call people, people. Pray every day for Jesus' return. Because there is no way that there will be any change in this world. According to the Bible, we are living in the end times. Our time is up. 2,000 years is up. We have, as the, 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 the pagan, not the pagan, what is it? Um, the Gentiles, that's pagan. The Gentiles have 2,000 years, just like the Hebrews had 2,000 years. And our 2,000 years are gone. They're over. Okay? Jesus is returning soon. God is working with six days and one Sabbath. That's 6,000 years and a Sabbath. Or a thousand, a millennium. Okay? 6,000 years and a millennium. We're coming to an end of the 6,000 years. Now, I know it's not exact, okay? It's not exact because our, I don't know, things are kind of screwed up anyways with uh, the calendar and, of course, thanks also to the Roman Catholic Church. But, and if you know that, you know that we have now a Gregorian calendar that was messed up sometime during Pope Gregory, Okay? So, the time, how to record the time is a little messed up, so we don't know 100%. But the time is coming to an end. 
And how do I know that Jesus is returning? How do you know that our time is finished and that the millennium is starting soon? Remember, the millennium is the day of the Lord. Day of the Lord. Why is it day? Because it's a thousand years. And that you can find either in first or second Peter. One day is like a thousand years. If you put that in your, your computer, you'll find it. It's in first or second Peter. Okay? So the day of the Lord is not one day. It is a thousand years. And within that thousand years, much hap will happen. First, the rapture will happen. Okay? That is the end of of the times of the Gentiles. The end of the times of the Gentiles is the rapture. That means the church has an end. That's when the church comes to an end. The church didn't start 2,000 year ago, years ago. The church actually started 6,000 years ago. Now, most people don't understand that one, does it? No, 2,000 years ago is when the church received the Holy Spirit. There's the difference. That's the time of the Gentiles, okay? The times of the Gentiles when the believers had the Holy Spirit, all of them. Before that, the believers didn't have the Holy Spirit. That's the only difference. But they come to an end, 2,000 years, 6,000 years, come to an end, okay? The church will be raptured, will be taken out. And that is really, you can say either the first event uh, uh, um, before the day of the Lord or the last event of the 6,000 years of human history. Whatever you want to call it. Okay? But the rapture happens. Then after that, the day um, in the day of the Lord starts. And it starts with the wrath of God. The wrath of God has to happen first. Why? Very simple. Because he has to destroy his enemies in order to establish his kingdom. That's just bottom line. He ain't going to establish a kingdom and then constantly, you know, fiddles around with his enemies. No, he is going to destroy his enemies. I said it in my last video, what will happen to Babylon the Great. She will be destroyed in one day. Read Revelation 18 if you haven't watched my last video. She will be destroyed in one day. Make no mistake, he is not going to allow uh, the beast system in Babylon the Great to continue. Now, before I finish, I want to remind you, and I want you to have an understanding why this Babylon the Great papacy is so corrupt. Somebody told me, that the man of sin is possessed by Satan. Is Satan himself? Well, I definitely agree with that. Okay, I definitely agree with that. Okay, maybe every pope so far has been possessed by Satan. I wouldn't doubt it one bit. I wouldn't doubt it. So much corruption. Only, you know, only Satan, this idea about, oh, I am the best. I am better than God. Where do you think that comes from? Of course, it comes from Satan, doesn't it? Yep. Don't make me make, make no mistake. That's the thinking of Satan. I am better than even God. I will put my throne up even above the most high. I put my throne up in heaven. That's what his goal is. He wants to kick out God out of heaven. I know he's crazy, but maybe he is. Okay. Do angels have uh, psychological problems as well? Because that sounds like it. Okay. Sounds like he has like high schizophrenia, narcissism, whatever you can't call it. So, anyways, that's where it comes from. But I'm coming to an end. Look at these things again. And I didn't give you any verses today, but hey, read this book. There's plenty of verses in here. He quoted the scripture. Read. Read his book. Buy his book. Read it. And always let the Holy Spirit guide you.